ACAs, so-called CSR payments, which are payments to insurers to reimburse them for discounts that the law requires insurers uh, provide to people with a little bit lower incomes in the individual market. So the common wisdom has been that if those CSRs were eliminated, that would be the worst thing that could happen and the markets would collapse. And I was interested that, you know, not only have you been talking about the need for stability to anybody who will listen this year in the government or out, but I noticed that your main spokeswoman uh, a few months ago um, was asked about uh, the importance of cost sharing reduction payments continuing. And she said that they were priority one, two, and three for us. Well, now the president has gone ahead and done it. He's eliminated the, the, uh, the payments. So now that they're gone, was all that talk hyperbole or are the markets about to collapse? <laughs> I don't think the markets are about to collapse. In fact, I would say the markets are pretty stubborn, okay? Mm -hmm. what, I think the reason that Christine said this was priority one, two, and three is if they go away, and they have, then you have to price over them. So that's about a 20% increase in premiums. So immediately, the low-income individuals who had cost-sharing subsidies are still protected because they're co-pays and deductibles. We still will cover those. So what happens is you increase the premium to handle that first dollar coverage or close to first dollar coverage. That is okay. That's a way to do it, cost the government more. But the second part of it is many, many people are in the individual market who do not get subsidies. So they get the full freight of any kind of price increase. And that's the part, that's why it's one, two, and three. Many of the people who voted for President Trump in this election are going to be the people who are affected with premiums going up three, four hundred. I've heard four hundred dollars a month from two people who happen to be my two siblings in Virginia and North Carolina who are in the individual market. And the third one I heard was from, I'll just say, a member of Congress last night whose premium went up eight hundred dollars a month for a family. I mean, that's the kind of hit that people are going to take if they're not in a subsidy. But you and others have been saying not just that prices would skyrocket, which they're now doing, right. um, or we're doing in preparation for this may be happening, um, but that insurers would just flee. Well, we certainly have seen some insurers exit, and that was the last question. But I think what we've seen more than that is insurers are in the business of providing coverage. So they're not going to exit a market unless they absolutely have to. So many of them have chose to price over the subsidy, stay in the market with the hope, Alexander Murray is an example, of some bipartisan effort to try to stabilize these markets. The individual market's not going away. It has a tough history. We actually stabilized it for a few years. It's entering another tough period. We really need some bipartisan effort to solve the problem. Well, let me ask you just one more thing about that, and this is more a political question, so it's kind of a little reversion to the first panel. <laughs> but you have been saying all year to folks on Capitol Hill that this is really important to guarantee these payments. Um, you know, there's talk about it. There's no certainty that this bill is going to pass. If it passes the Senate, no certainty what's going to happen in the House or whether the, or the president would sign it. So what can you do at this late date, so close to open enrollment, to ramp up that message, to increase the odds that this is actually going to happen. I mean, it's not new news that you think that right. these payments are essential. Well, obviously, we were working closely with Senator Alexander and Senator Murray to try to make sure that there's an understanding that the stability needs to be known. There's talk about funding the subsidies in 18 and 19. The problem that you have, if we don't have certainty around the subsidies, is you watch these premiums go up, more and more people, healthy people, who can't afford this drop out of the market, so then you have a higher number of uninsured. I think we saw some of those statistics this week. And then the second thing you have is then it becomes kind of a closed market. The market keeps shrinking, and then you get into trouble in 19 and 20 and beyond, and that's what we're trying to prevent.